So last week I ranted a bit on the FICO score and why we're not going to be using it when it comes to buying a home. But one of the other things I wanted to do, especially for this week, was kind of touch on a little bit on credit cards. And in particular, uh, uh, airline credit cards and travel points and miles and all other kind of stuff. Now, if you go into any Dave Ramsey videos, especially when it comes to him ranting about credit cards, you're going to go into the comments section, uh, especially you're going to find all the people who are supposedly disciplined and are really good with their credit cards because they can get free miles, they can make free round trips to different places, they can uh, travel to all these different foreign places, whether it's in Japan or whether it's to Canada or Italy or whatever it is, and they're able to do it all with their credit card and their airline points just by spending stuff on, or buying stuff on things that they normally would just be buying anyway, like utilities, food. So today I'm gonna to actually go over the math that's actually required and the numbers that are involved when it comes to taking these you know, free vacations. I'm gonna be doing it by using uh, two different cards. Number one is gonna be the Capital One uh, Venture card. And then the other one I'm gonna look at is the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. What I've done is taken a sample itinerary for a trip going from California over to Tokyo. And uh, if you look at this trip, and I'll, get, I'll show you some pictures right here. It's a basically, it's a pretty nice trip for eight days. And uh, it's gonna cost about $3,652, but it's also gonna cost about an extra $30 at the hotel once you finally get there. So I'll go ahead and round this up to $3,700. And this is a trip for two round trip tickets, both nonstop, for two folks uh, staying at a very nice hotel for eight days. Now the Capital One Venture Card lets you earn two miles for every $1 that you spend on everything. It also has a $50,000 sign up bonus and it also has a $95 fee, but I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that $95 fee for right now for the analysis. And this card uses miles. So in order to convert to miles based off of the cost, you have to just take your cost and multiply by 100. So for the example, if you have $200 in travel costs, you multiply that by 100, so that would be 20,000 miles you would need to earn on the card. So for this trip, the total cost is around $3,700. So convert it into miles. Now we have a 50,000 mile sign up bonus that we can just go ahead and deduct right from this. So this means we would need 320,000 miles earned on this card in order to afford this trip to Japan. Now the card earns two miles for every $1 that you spend. So now the question becomes is how much do you need to spend to earn 320,000 miles to go on the trip? you'd have to spend $160,000 in order to earn enough miles to go on this trip to Japan. Now, the common response that I usually hear from folks when it comes to justifying this is that this is money they were gonna spend anyway. I mean, you have to buy food, you have to buy uh, living conditions, you have to buy bills, you have to buy gas and all that other kind of stuff. So why not go ahead and get a reward with money that you were gonna have to spend on stuff anyway? This is a website that breaks down the basic expenses of the average household. And if you were to take away the uh, rent and mortgage because you wouldn't use those on credit cards, as well as any other debts, uh, what you're left with is what I would consider uh, credit card applicable purchases. So this, these are things like, like I said, utilities, bills, uh, any kind of food, extraneous stuff, uh, insurance, all these kind of things would be stuff that you could use your credit card on and earn points or miles in this case. And when you add up all of these credit card applicable purchases, you get about $3,000 per month that you could use on your credit card. So assuming you spend about $3,000 per month on your credit card and we have $160,000 to spend, how long would it take for you to reach that particular goal? It would take someone with average expenses of $3,000 per month over four years to spend that $160,000 in order to earn enough miles to go on that trip. So to summarize, it would take someone over four years spending $160,000 in order to get that free vacation that would just normally cost them less than $4,000 that would last about a week. And just for reference, if you no longer include the $50,000 uh, sign-up bonus, which you won't have moving on for the years after that, and you account for the uh, $95 a year fee, you'd actually have to spend $185,000. And with the same $3,000 a month uh, budget, that would then take you over five years in order to achieve that. Now that was all with the Capital One Venture Card. Let's try the same thing, but with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. It'll be the same trip with the same cost of around $3,700. Now the Chase Card uses points as opposed to miles. And the way that they do their conversion is, They'll do an extra 25% towards any kind of travel expenses. So the ratio that they give is 60,000 points for every $750 uh, dollars that you can redeem for uh, trip expenses. And they also do one point for, for normally for everything and they'll you give you two points for things like uh, uh, any kind of like travel expenses or dining in restaurants. So what I'll do is use one and a half points for every $1 spent. 
And there's also a 60,000 point sign up bonus, again, with another additional 95 annual fee. So the ratio is you can exchange 60,000 points for about $750 and they give you a 60,000 point sign up bonus. So let's just use that bonus and apply it right to here, which would be 750 right off the bat. So this means that the trip would actually cost $2,950. So if we use this number with this ratio and the fact that there's one and a half uh, points for every $1 spent, this means you would need to spend $157,333 in order to go on that same trip, which is kind of comparable to the Capital One, which was 160 k And like before, if you spent $3,000 a month on your credit card applicable purchases, it would take about four years, a little over four years, uh, in order to spend the $157,000 in order to go on a trip. So again, it's the same issue. You have to spend over $157,000 over the course of four years in order to afford a trip that's less than $4,000 for about a week. So how are people actually able to afford these free vacations? Well, if it starts here at the credit card company, what the credit card company will do is in order to allow certain vendors, and vendors I mean by like Home Depot, Walmart, Target, whoever it is, wherever you do shopping, they will charge the vendors, say roughly a two to eight, maybe even like a 5% uh, fee. And this is called a surcharge. Well, the vendor's not in the business of giving away things for free. So what they're gonna do is take that two to 5% surcharge and pass it on down to the customers in the form of elevated prices for all of their goods and services. This means that it's all the customers and us down here that are actually paying for these free trips for everybody else. Now, I normally don't have an issue with this if this was a bunch of credit card users that were funding other credit card users' vacations and trips. The problem though is that the people that are paying for this is everybody, whether or not they're using credit cards or not. And that also includes people that are on low income, that are on disability, that are, are on social security, that have medical issues, that maybe are, need to spend more money on particular medical uh, procedures and whatnot, uh, as well as folks that are on say section eight housing and people that are on, even on food stamps. And I know all these issues because this is what my mom had when we were both living up in Northern California and she had to provide for both myself as well as her while I was still in school, high school. And what bothers me about this is that there's folks out there that honestly think that they're being financially savvy and quick and cool because they think they're taking advantage of their credit card system when really what they're doing is they're taking advantage of everybody else. And I know that this is the way the system is set up and a lot of people will justify this and say that, well, why shouldn't I go ahead and get free airline miles? I mean, that's, I'm just taking advantage of what's available, but that doesn't make it right because the system inherently takes advantage of those that are at a disadvantage. It's just like a casino where in order for one or two people to win big, everybody else has to lose. Here's a way to go on quote unquote free vacations or vacations that are paid by another entity that do not require you stepping on other people and taking advantage of those that are at a disadvantage. So let's say you wanna go on a vacation just like the one we did and it's about $4,000 and you're gonna go on that vacation roughly every two years. And no surprise there, you need about $2,000 per year. So what asset value at let's say around a 4% dividend yield will give you $2,000 per year. That'll be about $50,000. Let's go ahead and round it up to 53K just to account for any kind of taxes and whatnot. So that means if you had an asset that was paying you roughly 4%, whether in dividends or growth or whatever it is per year, that asset effectively could pay for a, a $4,000 vacation by paying you $2,000 per year in dividends, that's the honey dripping off the pot. You don't touch the honey inside the pot, never touch the 53,000, only touch the 2,000 that comes out. Save that roughly every year, and then every two years, you'll be able to go on a vacation, a $4,000 vacation in perpetuity for as long as you want. So how would you make that $53,000? Let's say you wanna make the $53,000 in two years. This means you need about 26,500 per year or 2208 per month. This would be known as your cash flow, which is the difference between your income and your expenses. So what you would do is E is your living expenses right here. What you would do is figure out from your budget how to adjust E as well as I so that you can get 2200 or $2208 per month that you can now save into an investment. And then here's what I would do. I would graph and keep a chart or a record of all of my month and say these would be all the months that it would go on and you do this for 24 months and this would be how much money you actually have saved. And then I would do a trend line, or not trend line, but like just basically a, um, 
uh, like a status a status line right here at two thousand two hundred and eight dollars all right so maybe down here you have one thousand dollars right down here would be your five hundred dollars whatever it is and then i would make bar graphs for every single month and see how i'm doing relative to that goal all right and just keep moving this along as my months move along this is time in months and this way i can keep track of how well i'm reaching my 2208 goal so what this means is that in two years by saving and investing 2208 in an investment that pays roughly four percent dividends i will have around fifty three thousand dollars at which point that fifty three thousand dollars will start paying dividends well it'll always be paying dividends but i will then be able to take those dividends put them into a savings account and just let them grow and then every two years i will be able to afford a roughly four thousand dollar vacation which is for pretty nice vacation for two people say to a trip to japan or go to canada or italy or whatever it might be for like i said for two people for roughly about a week and i can do that in perpetuity roughly every two years as long as i want and now I am using the profits from Home Depot, Walgreens, CVS, uh, Dominion Energy, and all the other places that I have in my, on my, in my portfolio that are paying dividends. Those companies are paying for us to go on vacation and not other people that are being taken advantage of. And just as an example, this is our uh, current house fund that we're saving for. Uh, the goal is to get around $40,000 by the end of the year, which equates to a little over $3,000 per month. So you can see I have a little status line right here. And every month, whenever we add uh, money into the fund, I just record it here on this spreadsheet. And uh, the goal here is not to try to beat this line or to always go over the line. Some, some months we will do it, as you can see, other months we won't. It's just a status bar to see how things are moving and how we're progressing towards our goals. But this is just one example of what I was talking about, where you set a goal, you set a certain limit per month on how much you want to save for it, and then you just track your progress and see how you do as you're reaching your goal. And something else that I just thought about was uh, if you didn't want to make say like an asset or whatever that would be able to pay for you to go on vacation The other thing you could do is just reduce your budget by like 10% So if you have three thousand dollars that you're spending on your monthly expenses reduce that by 10% So take three hundred dollars and take that and put it into a savings account and just let that build up for a year Three hundred dollars at 12 months. Well, there's thirty six hundred dollars right there And that's pretty much gonna pay for your entire trip. So it really is about putting things into perspective so that you're not relying on credit cards and you're not thinking that the credit card points and the, the miles or whatever are really all that impressive because they really just, they really aren't. As always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, go uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Um, stay safe, uh, try to stay healthy and everything. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later.